Howdy. In the previous video what we did is we talked about basic integration and how antiderivatives basically work. But let's talk about a couple of special scenarios. Okay. So let's talk about the integral of 1 over x dx. So whenever you see the integral of 1 over x, this will be the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. Now, a lot of times, it might be written like this. You might write it as x to the negative 1. Or in the middle of an exam, you might be, you know, you might have like this 5 over x cubed. You start just raising stuff to the top, and that's natural. And how did we take a basic antiderivative? We took a basic antiderivative by adding 1 to the top and dividing. But, um, what's negative 1 plus 1? Well, negative 1 plus 1, that's 0. And it's like, wait a sec. So, you raise it to the 0, but divide it by 0, that's... It's like, wait, that's your hint. As soon as you do that, like, wait a sec, that's a special one. That one's going to be the natural log of x. Okay, so that was the way that I remembered it, especially when first starting out, because whenever you're doing a lot of integrals, a lot of stuff can get all mixed up. There's a lot of things you have to be aware of. Okay, now let's take a look at the integral of 1 over x squared. This one isn't particularly special. What's special about this is we have to remember the derivative of what was 1 over 1 plus x squared. Well, the derivative of arctangent was 1 over 1 plus x squared. Which means you still need to remember the derivative of all your arc trigs. That's not going away, okay? You need to recognize that when I do see the derivative of an arc trig, then the antiderivative of that would be its associated arc trig. And likewise over here, the integral of secant squared, this one in particular isn't special, but we need to ask ourselves, well, the derivative of what was secant squared? Well, the derivative of tangent, right? The derivative of tangent was secant squared, which is why the integral of secant squared is tangent, okay? So just be aware of that. Okay, so with that being said, let's take a look at a couple of examples, okay? Or I guess this example right here. So I have the integral of 4 over x squared plus 1 plus secant 3x tangent 3x plus 10x squared plus 1 over 2x cubed. Remember, don't commit the cardinal sin of trying to take the integral of this while algebraically simplifying this guy. Let's simplify him first, and then we'll take the integral of everything all together. So the 4 over x squared plus 1, that's good. We're fine with that. As well as the secant tangent. Okay, that one's okay. But here, I have 10x squared plus 1 over 2x cubed. Remember algebraically. Remember if I do, um, answer this for me real quick. 2 sevenths plus 3 sevenths. What's this equal to? Well, 5 sevenths, right? And how do we do that? Well, that's because we did 2 plus 3 over 7. And the whole point of this is that whenever you have things added or subtracted on top divided by one common denominator, you can split it. You can split it into two separate fractions. And that's exactly what I'm going to do here. I'm going to take these and split it. So this is going to be plus 10x squared over 2x cubed, right? And then plus 1 over 2x cubed. Okay, well, we're almost, we're almost simplified. Okay, so let's see. So this will be the integral of... And like I said, I keep writing the integral sign in front because I haven't done any antiderivatives. All I've done is I've done algebra, and I'm waiting. The uh, 4 over x squared plus 1, the secant tangent, I'm waiting to take those antiderivatives. I'm not going to do that yet until everything's algebraically simple. Now, the 10 over x squared divided by 2 over x cubed, I can rewrite this as plus 5x to the negative 1. Or you can write it as 5 over x. Either way, same thing. And then plus, here, the 1 over 2x cubed, I can't take the antiderivative when only an x is on bottom. So we need to raise that x to the top, and when I do, I make that a negative exponent. And now, now that everything's simplified, now let's integrate. All right, so the integral of 4 over x squared plus 1. Well, I know that the integral of 1 over x squared plus 1, I remember that that's arctangent. And so 4 over x squared plus 1 would just be 4 times the arctangent of x. Okay, but let's take a look at the secant tangent. And it's going to be in situations like this that we need to ask ourselves, the derivative of what was secant tangent? Well, thinking back, I remember that the derivative is secant. 
right? The derivative of secant with secant tangent. And because of that three on the inside, just like we did earlier, whenever there's a number on the inside, we divide it. What this is going to be, this is going to be one third times the secant of three x. Okay, cool. Now let's take a look at this five x is a negative one. How do we take a basic antiderivative? We add one to the top. Negative one plus one is zero. And but then you divide by zero. That doesn't make sense. You're like, wait a sec, that's right. That's my indication. That's my special one. That's a natural log. So this will be plus five times the natural log of the absolute value of x. And then finally, this one half x negative three, that's your pretty standard uh, basic antiderivative. And so you rewrite your constant and your variable. You add one to the top, negative three plus one is a negative two. I take that negative two, flip it, and put it in front. And so the only thing I'm gonna change here, your final answer is still gonna be that four arctangent of x plus one third secant of three x, oops, three x, plus five times the ln of the absolute value of x, and your negative one half times one half is a negative one fourth x to the negative two, and then plus c. If you want to write that um, last one as negative one over four x squared, bring that back to the bottom, that is more than okay.